Good morning. Hi, my name is Rory. Hi, I'm Kelly. Hi, my name is Rory Denneray. Okay, good morning. It's, it's Lanny and Barb Reed. Well, we would never have imagined when we left St. Paul many months ago that we'd still be here at our own homes. Lanny and I want to really thank Pastor Clark for all he's done and for everybody that's helped with the services. For us, Sunday morning at 9.15 is the only normal part of our day. So we just hope everybody at home is staying healthy and we really look forward to when we can all be back at the church. This is my cat brownie and I'm going to show him at the DeWitt Fair and I hope you have a great summer. Hi, this is Bailey. She is my 4-H cat. Hope you all have a great summer. Praise awaits you, our God in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house of your holy temple, your ans you answer us with awesome and righteous deeds. God our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it, you enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless the crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Clark Olson Smith, and it is a gift to worship God together, together even though we are at this distance. Now, <clears throat> There have been spikes in coronavirus cases across the country, including in Iowa, including in Clinton County. Uh, I just read that the Clinton County Community Health Manager um, says that uh, we've had 15 or more per week. It used to be that we had one or two cases every four to five days. Now uh, in Clinton County, we're averaging four to five per day. Um, and that all of this rise is uh, goes back to group activities. So I invite you to continue to be safe when you are finding ways to connect with people. Uh, wash your hands, wear a mask. Here, let me show you my mask. <clears throat> There's my mask. In fact, I bought a mask. This is not a, this is not a homemade mask, but one I bought uh, because it being comfortable uh, and usable over a long period of time is so important. Um, also, distance, six feet or more, continue to social distance, and outdoors is always safer. And if you have to go inside, keep it short, keep a distance, keep your mask on, wash your hands. So be safe. Uh, you can continue to find St. Paul's return plan at stpaulclinton.org. 
slash return. Thank you always for your generosity. Uh, these are difficult days and uh, it, uh, it means a lot. Um, uh, I appreciate it so much when I see St. Paul people continuing to give and invest in this ministry. Um, I, I just take it as a sign that you have been touched by love, held in love, uh, experienced God's love. And that's what we'll hear about today, always, every week. But this week, Jesus says, listen, a sower went out to sow, tells a parable we might remember as the parable of the sower or the parable of the seed. That seed is love. It involves this uh, openness to receive and this commitment to give. And what I find in it is, is a reminder that we cannot be on autopilot and love. Love and autopilot don't go together. Love always involves intention and commitment, especially a commitment to fun, to joy, to learning, continually learning and growing together about the things that are getting in the way of love. Take this time during the prelude to reflect, to set a new intention for this coming week, to love, to love intentionally in a committed way, to, to grow in joy and to grow with fun. Hey kids, hey St. Paul kids. Here are some kids. Today, we're gonna to hear Jesus tell a story about a farmer and him uh, growing love. That's what God is talking about, growing love. And whose garden is this? Our garden. Yeah? Um, did you guys plant these tomatoes? Uh -huh. Yep. I see. 
with seeds. Awesome. We're going to hear about a farmer who starts with seeds, seeds of love. So tell me, what did you guys do to help this plant grow? Did we have any problems that we had to overcome? Yes. So when we started it by seed, it wasn't growing enough. Uh-huh. So we had to get a new tomato plant and we had to make it not start by seed. Okay. It was grown a little bit before we started it. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Do we have any critters that are munching on our tomato plants? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and so, well, yeah, what do we do about those? Um. Amos, I saw you with a stick trying to get rid of them, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, how about the soil? Did we have any rocks in our soil? No. Nope. Did we have any weeds growing? Yes. What do we do with the weeds? We pulled them out. Yep. Now, what I want you guys to, to know and notice is that just like we were taking care of this garden so it could grow, God takes care of us so that love will grow in our lives, so that we can receive more love and feel more love and give more love to other people. And just like we didn't give up on our garden when there were... Um, you know, weeds and bugs and things that got in the way. Um, God's not going to give up on us when things get in the way. Anyone want to see a big ginormous tomato? <laughs> it's still doing. There's three, there's like four giant tomatoes. This one is the most big. This one's the biggest. Yeah. And this one's the fattest. Just... <laughs> Just think, Amos, God is growing love that big in our lives too. Amen? Amen. 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 Hey, can you guys share some peace with everybody? Peace? Yeah. Okay. We'll do it together. Put your arms out like this. The peace, peace of Lord. Christ be with peace you always. always. Amen. So The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Here ends the lesson. The second reading is from the book of Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on flesh is hostile to God, it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. 
Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of God does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Here ends the lesson. The Gospel According to Matthew Now that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. Since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some one hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Anyone with ears, listen. Now later, alone with his disciples, Jesus said, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word, immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root, but endures just for a little while, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. I love this passage. Um, I, Jesus is talking here about love. Um, he, he's offering his disciples a, a kind of a troubleshooting guide for uh, what to do when people do not receive love. All right? Um, I mean, for a while now, since like chapter 11, the theme of Matthew, the, the content of, of this section of Matthew is about um, how Jesus responds and in, interprets the resistance, the conflict, the quote-unquote failure that he and the disciples met in their ministry so far. And, you know, pretty obviously, this, this parable is about that. What, what, what's going on here? Um, why is this so hard? <clears throat> you know, I, uh, I really believe that um, the evolution that's being invited of, of us, Jesus is inviting us, to um, experience more positive energy, more love, more, more joy, more goodness. Uh, and um, trusting that we can bear the negative. Um, you know, each of us has a resistance to the love that we desire. We also have a resistance to the uh, the independence and the, um, you know, the space that we need. So what's kind of amazing here is that what this parable shows us that how do we identify the, the resistance in ourselves to love? Well, love itself brings those things to the surface. You know, I don't, I don't think I'm going so far beyond what Jesus intended when I say that the seed is love. 
Um, there's nothing wrong with the seed. The seed is good and the soil is good. Uh, the soil will produce when, when, when the seed is really received, it will produce naturally. Uh, and yet these barriers are real. And here's the way around them. You know, Jesus is not blaming the people. Christians were pretty good at blaming people for not getting it, or whatever we think they should be doing um, when we think they should get it. Um, Jesus doesn't blame the people. Jesus doesn't blame the love. Jesus helps us identify, see the problems. Love itself, when love comes, the problems, the resistance comes to the surface. So Jesus is inviting us, okay, so get ready for it. Here's how you can handle that so that you keep loving. You know, I think a lot of us are tempted to love until it's easy, or as long as it's easy, and as soon as it gets hard, well, all right, we tried love, now let's try something else. Jesus is kind of explicitly uh, pushing that away, um, saying that's a problem, that's a resistance to love in itself. Okay, so <clears throat> love is the seed. Love is also the fruit, the grain, the produce. It's about receiving love and giving love. So if you want to become a person who gives more love, the, the path is to become a person who receives more love. That's what I'm talking about again. Back to Jesus is inviting us to, to remove the barriers so that we can just receive um, you know, be the soil that receives the seed, is open to more love and positivity. That's what the invitation is, I think. Okay, so let's talk about that. Here are some of the things that I've learned get in the way. I, you know, I'm kind of taking um, a, a lot of this from a book called Conscious Loving. Um, and so this conversation is going to be a lot about, you know, love between two people in a relationship. It could be a, a marriage. Uh, it could be some other form of close relationship. But I think uh, that will help us translate that for the other kinds of relationships we have with our, uh, with our coworkers, with our neighbors, with, you know, I think it, it scales you know, it's true of individuals, it's true of communities and beyond. Um, but because Jesus is getting into the nitty gritty, right? He's literally uh, talking about uh, getting our hands dirty, um, getting beneath the surface. Let's just try to do that here. <clears throat> so one of the things that I've learned that has helped me receive more love. Well, let's first talk about this. This is maybe, this is a, all of us learned in our families. I mean, who, who even knows where we learned it? But the point is we've all learned that there's um, uh, to receive only a certain amount of love, of positivity. And if there's too much love, too much positive energy, we do something to interrupt it. Um, we uh, create an argument or we mess up in some way or we break a promise or break an agreement um, or we, uh, you know, just we, we interrupt it. You know, that's that's kind of how we try to keep that the equilibrium of to stay in that zone of not too much love, not too much positive energy. And so there is a natural cycle it, for anyone who wants to learn to receive more love, which, like this parable suggests, is really the only path towards um, giving more love. You know, the, the, most, the people who give the most are the people who have received the most. And so there is a kind of a growing of a muscle that we need to do to, to make it possible to receive more love. And so that's just a natural cycle of love and positivity and then rest. Love and positivity, a little bit more, and then rest. 
and then even a little bit more love and positivity, and then rest. Okay? I mean, just like, um, just like Jesus is using natural metaphors, so we can, we can look at the natural world around us and see this at work. Uh, there's night and day, a time for growth and a time for rest. Um, our breath, you know, our bodies, um, and so many other bodies in creation. There's a breathe in and a breathe out. Becoming people who receive more love and therefore can give more love is about honoring our limits, recognizing that we, we have to stretch and grow, and that's a lifelong thing. We can always be doing that, but not driving ourselves, but letting that be a, a, a fun and enjoyable experience where we allow ourselves to rest and just to integrate the positive energy, just to, to hold and manage the kind of negative, you know, stuff that comes up, or manage, uh, notice the resistance that rises up within us. It's that natural balance of, of receiving and then resting and then receiving a little more and resting again. Hopefully that makes some sense and resonates with your experience. <clears throat> um, and so how do we, we also then get to learn when, where is that tipping point? Where is that point when we've received enough and need to take a break? That is really all about learning to feel our feelings, learn to feel what's happening in our bodies. Uh, you know, Jesus talks about the, the heart, uh, the evil one comes and snatches it away. Um, our hearts, let that be a metaphor for our whole physical being. Uh, bodies matter. Your body matters. I mean, Jesus, uh, God became a human being. God put on a body, um, became a body. You don't have a body, you are a body. And God is a body too in Jesus Christ. And so, I mean, that means, that, that just shows us how seriously Jesus takes bodies, okay? Um, so let's take our own bodies a little more seriously and all of the sensations uh, within them. Um, when we, uh, there, there's a kind of this process of waking up to our bodies so that we can become fully alive to what's going on in them. That's the only way that we will know when we need to rest, when we need to, to lean into that space and independence that we need so that we can receive even more of the love that we desire. I mean, I'll tell you a story. I, I'm just like, um, I am an expert, a master at ignoring my body. I mean, especially when I was younger, um, I, I would just forget to eat. You know, I would work a whole day and get to the end and realize that I didn't eat lunch. Um, <laughs> uh, and I, I took a class on prayer one time and they taught this kind of prayer that I just, just had never even imagined before, a body prayer. And the point, you know, the process of a body prayer is just to sit quietly eyes closed or maybe even to lie down quietly eyes closed and scan through your body notice your body kind of starting at your feet your toes and just focusing your awareness on your feet and your toes thanking your feet for having carried you all day long and then you move up into your, you know, your, your lower legs, your, your calves, to your knees, to your thighs, and then all the way up your body, doing that same process of just letting your awareness focus on what am I feeling in my, my chest and my shoulders? Thank you, chest, for breathing all day long and for my shoulders for letting my arms move and do their thing. The first time I did this prayer, it was like my whole body was screaming at me, uh, trying to get my attention. And um, it was a really powerful experience, uh, an invitation to me that I need to do this more often. I, I need to pay attention to my body more often and really 
just honor it, give thanks for it, and notice the feelings, um, the sensations. <clears throat> so if, if that becoming aware of our feelings, becoming alive to what's happening in our bodies is an important part of receiving more love, um, the next part is to name it, to express it, to, to speak the truth that, it, it, that that's the, the deepest truth that we are capable of speaking. And doing this with, you know, this again in the, in the context of a one-to-one -one relationship, uh, of, a, of a marriage, of another close relationship, um, to name what's happening in our bodies to tell the truth that needs to be told. Because here's the, here's the alternative. You know, uh, the, 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 you know, receiving more love is not, a, not about a superhuman kind of a thing. Um, and it's not about a once for all, but it's about all these tiny little choices that we get throughout the day, tiny little moments of choice, where it's, are we going to express what needs expressing or are we going to withhold it okay and if we hold it withhold it then we start to withdraw from the other person we we create some distance and when we do that then we start projecting on the other person okay projecting means um when i'm not noticing what's going on in myself the very things that are going in on within myself unconsciously or what I see in the other person. So if I'm, um, so if I'm withholding anger, not expressing anger, um, and withdrawing from Sarah, my wife, suddenly I'll start notice, start seeing that she's angry. She's angry with me. Don't be fooled. I can be fooled. We all can be fooled. But don't be fooled. That's a projection um, onto the other person. I'm projecting on Sarah my own anger and seeing anger in her that doesn't exist, but is my anger. Like I'm looking through angry glasses, so now the world looks angry. Um, that's projection. <clears throat> Speaking the truth that is the deepest truth. Um, you know, in that Conscious Loving book uh, by Hendricks and Hendricks, uh, those are the authors, a married couple, they, um, they call it the microscopic truth. It could just be as simple as like, you know, when I hear you talk about that, I am feeling this tension uh, in my shoulders. Um, yeah, it, it could be as simple as um, I want this and not that. Um, telling the truth. Um, you know, first it's the awareness of the truth, and then it's the t telling the truth. And then learning to keep agreements. Um, this is the next part of how, the next kind of, of the, those three, of what it means to how we can um, experience more love in our relationships, in our closest relationships. Keeping our agreements. Um, all, so much of the times that we do not keep our agreements, you know, I don't take out the trash when I said I was, if I'm not home, when I say I was going to be home, um, you know, we might have all kinds of reasons why that happened, but often, very often, it comes down to um, creating a problem, that we've created the problem, um, created all of the barriers that make it impossible for us to, to keep the agreement. Um, you know, it's one thing if I'm running late and I can call a, a, as soon as I know I'm going to be late and calling ahead and letting, you know, Sarah know I'm going to be late because, um, yes, things do come up. But when I withhold that information and don't bother to share it with her, you know, that's a that's a kind of a little attack. If I just be kind of lazy and don't do what I said I was going to do, that's expressing um, that, that's just sucking energy out of the relationship. That's another way of like, um, you know, uh, too much positive energy and then creating pain, right? That's what we do. Too much love and then we create pain. Um, and the way to interrupt that cycle is these three things. 
to be alive to what's happening in our body so we know when we need to rest, uh, when we need our own space and independence. Um, it means speaking that truth when things naturally come up, when stuff happens, there are things that I just need to share. Um, uh, then um, learning to keep agreements um, because that is what part of what fuels positivity and love in a relationship. So, you know, there's, pro there's you know, we're not going to solve the problems of resistance to um, love in one day. Uh, and I could do that in one sermon. There's so much more that we could say. But I just want you to stop and notice one thing right off, the, uh, right before we go. Um, and that is, you know, in farming was a lot harder in Jesus's day. Um, and it may be true even today that farmers treat their seeds uh, as precious. And so any farmer that heard about a, a farmer that sowed seed on the path on rocky soil and on uh, thorny ground would have thought right off the bat, what's wrong with this farmer? Um, they are being reckless with their seed. God looks at it in a different way, though. Um, God sees the seed as precious to us rather than to God alone. Um, we need the love, and so God's going to give it. God is extravagantly abundant with God's love. God doesn't pick and choose. God is just indiscriminate with loving. And there is a lovable, you are lovable at the core of your being. You are lovable. And we can see this reality of how um, recklessly God loves and scatters the seeds, so to speak, just by, looking, just by looking at the world around us. I mean, I bet you could just look out your window or walk down the street around your house and how much grass will you find growing right up through the cracks in the pavement? Uh, or how many, um, you know, maybe uh, the, the bluffs um, a, a along the Mississippi River, seeing trees growing out of, out of rock, out of a cliff. Nature itself scatters its seed everywhere, and God's love is everywhere too. Welcome to this journey. We're all on this journey together of learning to receive more love. Because when that happens, we naturally will give more love too. And what a joy it is to be um, part of this with you and that we get to participate in this love and learn how to uh, receive it even more and give it even more. Thanks be to God.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures from generation to generation. It is everlasting. Amen. So trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let's now live in hope, because hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Called into unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees, and for land stripped bare by deforestization. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need. For Max, Jackie, Kelly, Kevin, Vince, Diane, Dale, Gail, Lisa, Nancy, Pauline, David, Rick, Margaret, Mary, Doug, Dorothy, Gary, Donna, Fern, Lois, Judy, Peyton, Carolyn, David, Carla, Kathleen, Kayla, Jeremy, Jordan, and Joshua. For the homebound, Darlene, Jean, Irene, and Sherry. For those in care facilities, Edith, Betty, Marion, Bob, Joan, Evelyn, Jean, Marge, and Peggy. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seed you have planted, that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. 
comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you.